What's going on, world? It's your boy, KJ. How's it going, everybody? It's been a while. We've been on a hiatus over here at J House Studios with this J House Radio. There's been a lot going on, a lot of recent changes behind the scenes. Me and Lois have been really busy, really, really busy. So that's why we had to take a little bit of a break from the show. And I definitely apologize to you guys for that. Like, I feel really bad that we have not been putting out content for J House Radio. But don't worry, we're back on track. Things are good. We are all set to go, guys. Um, I'm going at a solo tonight. And I have a lot to talk about. So I'm going to try to get through it. As quick as possible, try to keep it interesting for you guys. There's a lot of news coming out this week. Um, first off, I'm just going to start off with uh, what I've been up to. I've pretty much been working on some new merch, basically, with J House Studios and trying to get that situated right now. I'm trying to get some shirts out there for you guys. We got fall coming. Well, fall is here, basically, before you know it, winter is going to be here. So we got some new hoodies coming out for you guys, some new T-shirts, hats, and things like that. So I will definitely keep you guys posted on all of that. And I'll let you know when the, st- I mean, the store is still up right now, but it's going through a complete overhaul right now, basically. Complete overhaul. So once once that's done by next episode, I'll let you guys know when the store is back up and running and when you guys can start making your purchases. If you like to support the uh, studio, you purchase your very own J House hoodie. Uh, t-shirt sweater hat etc etc and we have a, a lot of new um different items that we're adding to the shop as well like mugs and things like that because you know i definitely need my coffee especially in my hot cocoa especially being that it's getting warmer i mean colder now uh definitely need that um i'm going to start off with my pwl guys like i said we're going to fly through it tonight um i think i said i was playing this before horizon zero dawn I believe I said I was playing it a while ago. I started and then I took a break from it, but now I'm back at it because I'm actually streaming it on Mixer right now. So if any of you guys are uh, gaming fans, which I'm pretty sure you are, that's probably one of the reasons why you're listening to this podcast. But for any of you guys who would like to check out my uh, streaming channel, it's mixer.com forward slash K, the number two, T-H-A-J. Uh, you guys can check me out on there. I stream usually Mondays, Thursdays, and Fridays, sometimes Saturdays, if I have time. Uh, I'm currently streaming um, Horizon Zero Dawn. It's basically, I called it the Zelda for PlayStation. Basically, it's by a developer called Guerrilla Games. Came out 2017 for the PlayStation 4. It's an RPG style game, basically, um, about a woman trying to discover her secrets of where she came from while trying to survive in a world of robotic animals, basically, literally robotic animals. Awesome game, uh, definitely check it out. I'm streaming that on um, on Mixer right now. I'm trying to finish it off before uh, the supposed rumored Horizon Zero Dawn 2 that might be coming out next year or around the time of the launch of the PlayStation 5. So I'm looking forward to that and yeah, that's what I'm playing right now. Um, what am I watching? Now, this is going to also be my recommendation, guys. I finally watched Spider-Man Far From Home. And I have to say, this game, man, this game, this film was a lot better than I thought it was. Now, before anybody starts saying, wait, what do you mean better than you thought it was? Like, what are you talking about? Coming at me with the pitchforks and all. I... I didn't think it was going to be bad. I just didn't know it was going to be as good as it was. This was a great, great, great film. For me, honestly, it started off a little slow. I'll definitely say that much. It started off a little slow. But man, just watching this film, it just felt great to see these characters from this comic book on screen. And one of my favorite villains in Spider-Man, I have a like a lot of my favorite villains besides, you know, villains that are in the, you know, the DC universe. A lot of my favorite villains come from the Spider-Man world. Spider-Man has some very interesting villains that I feel like if you put on a screen, it could make for some great for some great film. It really could. And C. Mysterio, one of my favorite villains from that universe as well, Jake Gyllenhaal 
did an amazing job as Mysterio. Like, I actually felt bad for his character. Like, he... I'm going to try not to spoil anything, but he had a vision after... Uh, this is kind of a spoiler right here, but I'm pretty sure everybody knows this already. But after Iron Man died, Mysterio basically was saying that he wanted to give the people, the world, something to believe in. He wanted to give them another, a new hero that they can believe in. That was kind of like the next Iron Man. I'm not going to go into the backstory because there's actually some backstory that kind of connects the two between Iron Man and Mysterio. But he basically wanted to give the people something to believe in. And I'm going to leave it at that. But Jake Gyllenhaal did a great job of the character. I loved his character. I really did. Uh, I would love to see more Mysterio in future films. I'm not sure how they would do that. But... I loved his character. Awesome film. And Tom Holland, as always, did an amazing job as Spider-Man. No pun intended. Um, I wasn't too sure about how I felt about MJ. I, I, I just, I, I don't, I don't know. Zendania, she uh, played MJ. And I don't know. I felt like it was her character in most of her shows, I've seen her on Nick. I think she's on Nickelodeon. She's really bland. And I'm not, I think she's playing a different kind of MJ. But I, overall, I just, I, I didn't like her character just in general. I, I just, I didn't like her character. I didn't like how, I mean, her awkwardness with Peter Parker. That was, that was interesting. I like the awkwardness that they had together because I just thought it was kind of cute. But overall, I really didn't like her character. I felt like it was just really bland and a little boring at times. And but when but when her and Peter were having their moments together, that was probably the only time that I really enjoyed her character. Honestly, um, like I said, I'm not gonna really jump, jump into spoiler territory with this one. But overall, it it just really surprised me. It felt like a true comic book story brought to life. Like I felt like I was watching a literal live action comic book movie here it was a great film the action was awesome and honestly in my opinion i think if jake gyllenhaal didn't carry the performance that he did as mysterio i'm not sure if that if this film would have been as good as it was because he carried that performance very well very like he really dove into that character and i love that i loved him for that Honestly, so Spider-Man Far From Home, that's what I'm watching. That's also my recommendation. So I'm a little late to the party in watching that. But if you guys haven't checked that out, I highly recommend check it out. What I'm listening to, uh, nothing really new there. So I'm just going to skip past on that one. So I want to give a special shout out to anybody of the Hispanic background. Big ups to you guys. You guys are amazing. And in the, in the words of the famous... Keanu Reeves, you're breathtaking. Just remember that. So yeah, that's what's going on so far, guys. Uh, this weekend, at the time of this recording, Joker comes out Friday. I am definitely going to check out Joker this weekend. Anybody who knows me, I am a big DC guy, big Batman guy. I love Joker. He's my favorite villain of all time. And I think it's amazing that he's finally getting his own film this weekend. Um, gonna go see that for sure. Next episode, we might do a special episode for our Patreons only. We might. I'm not 100 percent sure. Um, but yeah, this weekend I'm gonna go check out the Joker. It comes out Friday. I can't wait. Actually, part of the uh part of the Joker was actually filmed in my hometown of Newark, New Jersey, downtown Newark. So it's gonna be interesting to see that film and find out or see some parts that kind of remind me of being back home basically so that's gonna be pretty cool so we might actually do a very special uh episode for our patreon maybe we'll do a joker spoiler cast uh which is going to be an episode dedicated strictly to the joker film our thoughts on it but that's going to be for our patreon so if anybody would like to check out that episode when we do it uh you can go to patreon.com forward slash j house studios it's another great way to support the studio if you guys like financially so yeah, that's what's going to probably happen next week more than likely, uh, which is just a few days after this recording. Uh, another thing I want to jump into right before we get into news, 
I just, right before I hit record today, guys, literally a few minutes before I started recording, I just saw the new trailer for Birds of Prey. Man, it looks pretty good. But then again, looks can be deceiving because that's what I said about the Suicide Squad trailer. And I was highly disappointed. Highly disappointed. Now, granted, this trailer is... It looks very colorful. It kind of reminds me of the Suicide trailer. Now, granted, I know it's a totally different uh, director and producer for this one. It just gives me that vibe of Suicide Squad. And I'm just hoping that we get something way better. But from the trailer, you can clearly, you can clearly see that Harley Quinn is upset at Mr. J, a.k.a. Joker. Uh, she's going rogue. She's doing her own thing. She's recruited a, uh, a bunch of her own little friends uh this the trailer doesn't give too much of a story beat which is fine you know it, it pretty much just gives you an idea of what's going on as far as like harley quinn it, it gives you an idea of what's going on with, with harley quinn right now she's going through kind of like a resurgence basically uh black mask you don't really i mean you see black mask in it but you don't see him with his mask basically they don't want to give that away yet and i really do appreciate that no signs of Batman in this one. Like I said, very colorful. Just a bunch of little skits of Harley Quinn being Harley Quinn. It, it literally looks like, and this is what I was talking about before with the Spider-Man film. It literally looks like Harley Quinn hopped out of the comics, hopped out of the cartoon show, and she's just on screen. It's, she's very wacky, over the top, colorful. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. And I, I'm, really, I'm really looking forward to it because of that. She looks like, harley quinn and i can't wait for this it didn't really dive into the other characters that that are working with harley quinn it, it, this trailer was mainly focused on her which is cool um so yeah I, i'm really looking forward to this film did this this trailer really got my excitement for this film through the roof right now uh it's going to be coming out february of 2020 so i'm definitely going to be in there day one and we're definitely going to have a spoiler cast episode for that one as well looking forward to it so yeah february 7th of 2020 well that's the expected expected release date right now it's in post-production so i'm definitely looking forward to that uh dc man make me proud that's all i gotta say make me proud dc everybody who knows me knows i love dc i want them to make me proud for sure all right now we're gonna jump into our news topics Since we were just talking about Spider-Man, I'm going to jump into the latest Spider-Man news, which I'm sure some of you probably heard about recently. But Sony and Marvel are finally being nice to each other and they are going to basically work on the next Spider-Man film together. Honestly, I'm surprised because after that whole big debacle with Sony saying, all right, Marvel, you guys made enough money with our uh with our guy peter parker we're gonna take him back and we're gonna reap the benefits of all the success that you had with spider-man over the past few years and then i believe that this move for sony and disney to strike a deal to work on one more film together i think that had to do with the fans i think they saw the outrage that occurred from a lot of fans who were a little upset about sony taking spider-man back because a lot of people know sony did not do a good job with the previous spider-man films me and lois talked about it before in previous episodes they're not that great spider-man 2 was probably the best out of the previous spider-man films but all the other sony films as far as spider-man is concerned were not great at all very disappointing um it just wasn't handled properly in my opinion, it, it was not handled properly. And I think Sony saw the, you know, the outrage from fans. Some of them probably saying that they they probably won't even watch another Spider-Man film because of Sony handling it. They saw the outrage and they said, you know what? Yeah, all right, guys, we're going to do one more film. We're going to do one more film. So Sony, Sony tried to say that, you know, Kevin Feige was too busy. He had too much on his plate. We're going to take Spider-Man back and, you know, 
give him give us some time to focus on other stuff. It's, that sounds like bull to me. Taking one movie away from Feige is not going to make his life easier. He still has so many. Do you have any? Do you guys have any idea how many franchises that they're working on right now? We have Spider-Man possible X-Men universe coming back and, you know, coming back into play. We have all the TV shows with, you know, Loki and everything on Disney Plus. We have Black Widow. Like, there's so many movies that are being worked on right now. And you taking Spider-Man away, oh, wow, that's not going to make it any easier. There's still tons and tons and tons of other films that they're working on. That was just Sony being greedy. They saw how much success Spider-Man had, and they wanted to cash out on that. That's basically all there was. And this deal going down is basically Sony saying, all right, you know, the fans are mad. Okay, I guess we'll do one more film. The thing is, why one more film? Why not just work together indefinitely on this character together as a team? Why just say, oh, we'll do one more film? I don't see the point in that. What, just to temporarily make the fans happy? I, I just I really don't see any point in them making that move to do one more film. Now, granted, it's great that they're doing one more film that at least lets me know that, OK, maybe the next film won't be bad because Sony is not going to be the only ones handling it. But then again, it's just it makes me wonder how is it going to be being that Sony is now also handling it as well? Is it going to be the same? You know, are we going to get the Spider-Man of the Sam Remy days or are we going to get the Spider-Man of the Marvel days? So I'm really curious to see how this partnership with Sony and Disney on the next Spider-Man film, how it's going to affect the next Spider-Man film. Uh, the next Spider-Man film is set to release July 16th of 2021. So not too far off, not too far off. So a lot of eyes are going to be looking on this film to see how it's going to be what's going to happen with this character like this is probably going to be the biggest spider-man film to determine the future of spider-man to, to you know to determine the direction of where spider-man is going so i don't know we'll see guys we'll see i mean also the actor uh who plays shang chi in the marvel films or in the future marvel films he's excited about Spider-Man um, coming back to the MCU. He even pitched to Marvel a possible crossover film, which I think would be amazing. Once again, no pun intended. You know, Spider-Man is, is a very interesting character in the MCU. He's a very interesting character. He crosses over with a lot of other characters in the MCU. And to see him and, you know, Shang-Chi in a film together would be just out of this world. And speaking of out of this world, uh, rumors have been circling around for the past few weeks that Marvel is currently trying to offer Hugh Jackman anything they can offer to get him to come back to play Wolverine. That's a rumor. It hasn't been confirmed yet. I've even researched it myself to try to find some kind of confirmation as to whether they did it or not. But we haven't really found anything yet, but that's the rumor. And I think that would be awesome if they could bring Hugh, Hugh Jackman back, maybe at least for one, maybe two more films, depending on what they plan on doing with him. Because the question now is, yeah, we have the Avengers and this whole question mark on where this franchise is going after the death of Tony Stark. But the bigger question is what's going to happen with the mutants we haven't had a good x-men film in a while besides logan but that was more of a spinoff than anything else when was the last time we had a good x-men film first class maybe first class was actually pretty good but now the the wolverine the x-men universe is just kind of like in a big question mark right now and I love the X-Men. I remember watching the X-Men cartoons as a kid, playing the X-Men video games. Wolverine is one of my favorite comic book characters. Like, I love that world. And it's going to be weird to see somebody else play Wolverine, especially after Logan is still kind of fresh in our minds. 
to see someone just come out of nowhere and just be the new Wolverine, it's, it's going to be weird. It's going to take some getting used to. I don't even know if it will be a good idea to even have a standalone Wolverine movie with the new Wolverine off the back. Because I just think people will look at it a little weird being that Logan is still fresh in our minds. Like if you're going to do a Wolverine movie with a new guy playing that character and maybe have him feature in a movie with someone else. I don't know. It's a very tricky situation, but I mean, it would be nice to see if Hugh Jackman will actually try to come back. I mean, I know he said he won. I know he said he was done with the character. He said he was done. He was happy where everything left off. Uh, I'm sure Marvel will leave the door open for him, but he is getting older and the more time passes, the less I see him coming back because like I said, he's getting older, you know? So, but it's interesting. It's interesting to see that they're actually offering him an opportunity to come back and play that character because Hugh Jackman is Wolverine. That's like somebody coming back to play Iron Man. You, you, you just can't do that. You literally just can't do that. Fans will be upset. They'll look at you and say, what are you doing? That's not Tony Stark. That's not. No matter how much time passes, maybe 20 years from now, maybe you could do that. But before then, no, you just can't do that. It's just not going to look right. <laughs> Honestly, it's just not going to look right. All right. So my final news topic of the day is Candyman. I know very random. I know people probably haven't seen Candyman in like forever. But yeah, Jordan Peele, one of my favorite directors right now, who is doing some amazing things in the horror universe is said to be working on a reboot of the 1992 cult film Candyman. Um, I just thought that was really interesting. It, it really caught me off guard. I didn't even know Jordan Peele was even considering working on that film. But Jordan Peele, man, his mind is just insane. When it comes to storytelling, uh, I watched the movie Us. I watched the movie Get Out. And he's a very creative guy. I love his vision. Uh, I personally think that he's going to be the new Alfred Hitchcock. I know I'm going to get a lot of gripe for that. I know that. I know I can hear Los screaming at the top of his lungs saying, what? What are you talking about? It's just honestly nowadays, who, if you think about all the horror directors, the last amazing horror director that we had was Wes Craven, you know, May he rest in peace. Who do we have right now in the game who's really throwing things down like that? Who? Who do, who do we really have? And what Jordan Peele is doing right now is something that is just amazing. He's taking these horror stories and he's adding these different levels of just detail to it so much detail and he makes you think he gives you stories that makes you think it's not just about the hack and slash which is amazing obviously us, us as horror fans we love a good hack and slash but he has a story attached to it that makes you think and that's what i love about him that's what i love about him that's why i said to me in my opinion he's the new he's the new age alfred hitchcock might be a different style obviously but I love what he brings to the horror genre. I really do. So yeah, the, the, the word is that he is going to be working on the remake of Candyman and Tony Todd, who played the original Candyman back in 92, it might be back in 92, might be coming back to reprise his role as Candyman. Um, it's not confirmed yet. Right now, it's all rumors. Everything like right now, it seems like it's just nothing but rumors at this point. Nothing is confirmed yet. But I don't know. I, I haven't I haven't seen Tony Todd in a while. I haven't seen what he looks like. So I'm curious to see like how he would look playing that role again. I wouldn't mind seeing somebody else play that role. I mean, it's been long enough. It's been 1992. Wow. That's a long time ago. So having somebody else play that role wouldn't be a bad idea. I mean, I'm pretty sure he's pretty old now. I don't know how old he was when that film first came out, but he might be pretty old. So we'll definitely see where that goes. 
All right, so we're going to jump into our show notes right now. And some of our news comes out of PlayStation's recent State of Play. Um, State of Play is PlayStation's version of the a Nintendo Direct, basically. It's a small video vignette, basically, usually about 30 minutes long, that just talks about all the things coming out of PlayStation. Gaming news, hardware news, just any news basically a lot of gaming companies are taking this method nintendo has the nintendo direct sony has the state of play xbox has this week in xbox so i feel like a lot of gaming developers companies are going the streaming route of the on-demand route of giving out news about their platform that's where we are today in gaming, everything is about streaming. Everything is about digital. You don't really have to be in person at a conference to get news on what's going on in PlayStation anymore or what's going on in Xbox anymore. Now, granted, a conference is still good to go to because it's still an amazing time. But that's where everybody's going, basically. So there's a lot that came out of the uh, PlayStation state of play. Uh, we got a confirmation that Medieval is getting a short-lived, well, it's called short-lived demo, basically. It looks pretty interesting. I'm going to check that out. It's based off of the classic Medieval game that came out, I think, on PlayStation 2, I want to say. So it seems like it's more of a, a rebirth than a remake, basically. So that should be interesting. Civilization 6. Uh, we got a trailer on that one. I'm not a big civilization guy. I'm not really big on building worlds and things like that. Basically, um, there was a lot of indie games that were uh, touched on in this state of play, which is really surprising because I know Sony said going into next generation, they're going to try to focus more so on the story heavy AAA games than the indie games but i felt like this state of play was flooded with indie games which is great i, I don't have a problem with indie games i actually love indie games uh, i usually use i usually take a break from the big AAA games from time to time and just play like a nice indie game it, it's good to just to dive into that once in a while honestly la nor the vr case files la nor um they had a remake not too long ago that that came out with that game now we're getting a vr experience with that game i think it's just uh i don't think it's a vr of the entire previous release game i think they have separate missions that that's exclusive to the vr experience uh they didn't really give too much detail on how this is going to work they just gave us a trailer of the vr um gameplay basically um i'm probably not going to dive into this one i never played la noir um, so that one doesn't really interest me too much. The big thing, well, two big things that came out of state of play. First, I want to dive into the limited edition Death Stranding PS4 Pro bundle. It's the PS4 Pro console that is themed around Death Stranding. For one, looks pretty interesting, not going to lie. On top, well, first off, it's a... A white PlayStation with the middle bracket, the entire middle bracket for anybody who has a PlayStation Pro knows what I'm talking about. You have three layers. There's a top layer, there's a middle layer, and then there's a bottom layer. The middle layer is black with the Death Stranding logo on the front of the PlayStation on the black. And on top of the PlayStation, which is white, it has two black handprints. Pretty interesting. Pretty interesting. I mean, you know, it's not overly detail like the xbox one x gears of war special edition <laughs> that console is amazing by the way um but design color wise it looks nice it looks nice i mean i would like to see sony get a little more ballsier when it comes to the special edition consoles because i feel like microsoft is killing it in that department i mean sony's last really good limited edition console the uh blue see-through console that was probably the most edgy i've seen sony be as far as consoles all their other special edition consoles just seem very it just looks like they just put a piece of vinyl over it and just say oh hey here's a special edition console 
I'm like, buddy, I can just get that vinyl off of uh, Amazon. You know, like that. That's what it typically looks like when it comes to PlayStation's limited edition console or special edition consoles. Now, their controller for the Death Stranding bundle looks interesting. Now, you know, in the Death Stranding game, Norman Reedus is walking around with a baby inside a little canister full of like yellow fluid. To this day, we still don't know what that's about. Now, they have the controller, which is see through and it's yellow like the fluid that the baby is sitting in in the game. So the controller looks pretty neat. It looks pretty neat. I might actually pick this controller up. Me, I'm a big controller guy. I love getting special, weird, colorful, just different controllers. Like, that's just me. I collect controllers. I love controllers. So me personally, I'm not the kind of person to go out and buy limited edition consoles when they drop because I already have a console and I don't want to spend $400 on a new console just to get a different look. It looks interesting though. The controller is nice. I'll definitely get the controller for sure. But it's it's a nice touch. It's a nice touch. And I'm looking forward to, you know, Death Stranding, even though it's one of those games that a lot of us don't really know much of anything about. But because of the fact that I don't know much about it, is keeping me intrigued so i'm gonna go get it anyways honestly the last amazing thing that came out of playstation state of play was that we finally got a release date for the last of us part two it's coming out on the ps4 february 21st of 2020 and man that trailer looks amazing it looks amazing i mean i'm a little worried about the fact that i think and i'm not going to spoil the trailer for you guys too much i want you guys to check it out because it's a great trailer graphically it looks awesome as always naughty dog is one of my favorite video game developers in the world i've been down with those guys since crash bandicoot so the game looks beautiful um before i go on with that they they said naughty dog confirmed that the Last of Us 2 is going to be their longest game that they ever put out. So part of me is like, wow, I thought Uncharted 4 was long. Like I thought Uncharted 4 was excessively long, but now they're saying that this one is going to be their longest game released. And this might actually be the last of the story to tell within this world, basically. We didn't get too much as far as gameplay mechanics basically but we did get to see ellie go through an encounter and it looks like the encounter involved her getting hurt and something happened something happening to her female friend who she's dating that's what i think now once again naughty dog could just be misleading us and making us think that but I'm hoping that that's not the case because I feel like this trailer could have possibly just given us the story right now. It could have just basically told us what this story is about. It's about Ellie trying to get revenge on somebody killing her girlfriend. And I'm hoping that that's not just the only reason why we're going through this adventure. But like I said, nine times out of 10, I'm pretty sure Naughty Dog knows what they're doing. I've been playing their games for years. They're an amazing studio. I'm pretty sure they're just leading us into a different direction, basically. That's my take on it. At the end of the trailer, we saw Joel come back. We saw Joel for the first time. We've been seeing teasers and trailers and snippets about The Last of Us 2 for the past, what, two, three years? And we never saw Joel. We heard him, but we never saw him. We finally saw Joel in this trailer at the end. If you guys haven't seen the trailer, go watch it. It looks amazing. Last of Us 2 next year. It's my, honestly, I'm going to call it right now, guys. I don't really know what else is really coming out after the spring of next year. But I'm going to say that this might be game of the year. I'm calling it 2020 Last of Us 2 game of the year. I don't care what PlayStation or Xbox is putting out for their launch titles for their consoles. I'm calling this game of the year next year. It just looks like it's going to be just amazing. It looks like it's going to be amazing. I trust Naughty Dog. I really do. This is going to be this. I don't think Naughty Dog had a game of the year yet, did they? I might, th I might look into that. I'm not sure if they had a game of the year. Um. So, yeah. That was PlayStation State of Play. Not a lot of crazy news besides Last of Us and Death Stranding coming out of that. Um, 
conference. So now on to our final show notes topic, Nintendo Switch Lite. I finally got my hands on review with the Nintendo Switch Lite. I got my son a Nintendo Switch Lite for Christmas. I do my Christmas shopping insanely early to get it out the way, at least for the big stuff, at least for the big stuff. So I got him the gray Nintendo Switch Lite. I'm a Nintendo Switch owner myself. And I have to say, I really like the Switch Lite. I really do. Just based off of how it feels, it feels amazing. One of the things that a lot of people say, and I have to agree that the current Nintendo Switch sometimes feels really clanky. You feel like you're going to break it if you hold it the wrong way or it's just it feels really clanky. It really does. The Nintendo Switch Lite feels solid. It feels like something of quality. And it just, it feels really sturdy. Maybe because of the fact that you can't take the Joy-Cons off. You know, um, I'm just gonna jump into a bunch of different things that I love about it. The buttons, the uh, plus and minus buttons, the shoulder buttons, they feel like they're a little more raised, which I actually like because you, you just, you get more of a feel, of, more of a feel of the button, basically. I know it's might, it might be something small and just, probably not that important to a lot of people uh the brightness is definitely better on the switch light it's way better one of the things that i complained about is that i felt like playing on my nintendo switch i felt like the screen was really dark even when i was sitting in bright situations like sitting out in the sun you know or sitting sitting in my living room at nighttime i, I felt like my switch screen was dark and I couldn't figure out why. I was like, is it me? Is it my glasses? Is it my eyes? Like, is it the lighting in the room? I'm like, why does my screen look so dark? And I was on the Switch light, and I was like, wow, this screen looks beautiful because it felt well lit. And I even did a comparison between both, and it's a major difference in the screen brightness. Major difference. Another thing that I love about this Switch light. It's obviously the main feature that a lot of people wanted on the regular Switch was the D-pad. I love the D-pad. I played a few of my games on, on the Switch Lite and it just felt good to have an actual D-pad. I hate this so-called D-pad buttons on the Nintendo Switch. I hate it. I really do. I deal with it obviously because it's there. I have no other choice but I hate the directional buttons on the original Switch. I, I cannot stand it. And I, from a design standpoint, I know they said that they had some limitations as far as having a, a controller like that, especially being that it detaches and you can play it sideways. They, they had limitations on being able to put a D-pad on that, which me, I don't make consoles, so I'm not understanding what limitations that would cause, but it feels great to have a D-pad on a switch it really does i love it it feels great i me honestly if i was to give this the nintendo light a grade out of 10 i would give it an eight and a half i'd give it a nine even it's a little smaller for me because i have big hands so if i was to get a nintendo light for myself it would just be more so like like i'll still keep my original switch and just keep the light for if i just want to play in handheld mode or something like that but like I said, it's a little small for my hands, but now they also have uh, little grips that you can get for it. I highly recommend Satisfy for you guys. I have a Satisfy, um, I have a Satisfy grip on my original Switch and I love it. Um, it just basically gives you a more realistic grip on the system and it feels like you're actually holding a controller when you're playing your Switch. It almost feels like an Xbox controller, basically. The uh, right handle actually angles out a little more to make it more comfortable for your right thumb. So if anybody's looking to get a grip for their switch, I would definitely check out Satisfy. Um, that's spelled with that's spelled with the S A T I. I would definitely recommend Satisfy if anybody's looking for a grip for their switch. It's an awesome grip and it just makes it twenty times more comfortable for those who have big hands and who get crampy hands when they're playing their switch i definitely recommend it i think they're also coming out with a new grip for the switch light so that should be that should be amazing i might 
actually just get a, a light. If they have a grip for the Switch Lite from Satisfy, maybe I actually might get the Switch Lite. Maybe. I mean, obviously the only downfall is that the Switch Lite is not going to be for everybody because I feel like if you're the kind of person that plays your Switch in multiple ways, you played in handheld mode, you played in desktop mode, you play with friends with the Joy-Cons disconnected, and you love to play it in dock sometimes on the weekends. If you're that kind of person, the Switch Lite is not for you because the Joy-Cons don't detach, it doesn't have a kickstand, and you can't plug it into your dock. So me personally, people might say, who is this for? Me, I say the Switch Lite is for maybe kids. You have a little one who wants to play Switch. You don't want to give them yours and you say, hey, here you go. Here's your own Switch. You know, or if you're a person who has a Switch and you play it in dock a lot, but you want to be able to have one that's a little more sturdier to take out when you're traveling or going around places, leave your regular Switch at home. Take the Switch Lite with you when you go out. It could be for that kind of person as well. So it just depends on you and how you play your Switch. Me personally, I don't feel like, I mean, I play in handheld mode 98% of the time. Once in a blue moon, depending on the game that I'm playing, I'll throw it in dock mode. But that's a super, super rare occasion. I, I rarely play in dock mode at all. Um, so me, the Switch Lite will probably be good for me. But like I said, it's really small for my hands, so I'm not sure. I mean, it's not, the, the size is not major. It's not like, oh, it's 50% smaller. It's, I would say it's it's nowhere near that. It's not that smaller. But it is a decent amount si of size smaller than the original Switch. You know, so for me personally, if I was to get it, I would have to get it with a satisfied grip. And I would enjoy it that way. So yeah, the Nintendo Switch Lite, I would definitely recommend it, especially if you have kids. I would definitely recommend it. It's, it's definitely worth a buy. And like I said, it feels, it feels like a good refresh. Like I feel like the quality, the feel of this Switch is way better than the original Nintendo. And that's one of the things that we as early adopters suffer from. We know when we buy the first console, when it first comes out, the first phone or the first this or the first that, you suffer through the growing pains of the first product. And then on in like a year or two, a few months later, the revised product comes out. Now granted, this is not a revised for the Switch necessarily, but the revised product comes out and you're like, wow, this feels so much better. Me personally, I'm hoping that they're still coming out with the Switch Pro next year. Because if the Switch Lite feels like this, I can't wait to see what a Switch Pro feels like. I can't wait. It's going to be amazing. I'm, and I'm hoping they come out with a Switch Pro because we need it. I'm tired of having the Joy-Con drift problem. I honestly, I think I've had my Switch for two years. And I've had to replace my Joy-Con at least four times. In two years, guys. There's no way I should be replacing a controller that many times in two years. There's no way. No way. It, it, and right now, I'm actually going through a Joy-Con drift problem right now. My left Joy-Con is starting to act up again. It's not charging properly. Like, I'll charge my Switch with both Joy-Cons in. And then my left Joy-Con will drain battery almost 40 times faster than my right Joy-Con. And mind you guys, I barely play my Switch. I barely play it. And for some reason, I'm constantly having a left Joy-Con problem. It's always left Joy-Con too. It's never the right Joy-Con. I've never had a problem with the right Joy-Con since I bought my Switch. It's always the left Joy-Con. So there's obviously some kind of default manufacturer problem with the Switch that they need to fix. Now, I'm hoping that with the Switch Lite that that's not a problem because if that is, you got to send your whole console in. You can't just send in your Joy-Con. You can't just go buy a new Joy-Con. If they can't fix it, you got to get a whole new system. And that sucks. Overall, like I said, good system, better quality. It's, it just may not be for everybody. All right, guys. So that's going to be the end of the show. I definitely appreciate you guys hanging out with me. Um, like I said before, my recommendations from earlier is Spider-Man Far From Home. Make sure you guys check it out. Great film. And there's definitely something at the end of that film that happens that made me go, holy crap. 
so it's i'm not gonna spoil it just just go see the film great film for sure i'm gonna leave off with the biz um if you guys are listening to us on itunes make sure you guys leave, leave a comment let me know if you guys like anything if you guys didn't like anything we always love for you guys to leave a comment and just let us know what you think of the show because that's going to help us get better basically if you guys are listening to us on youtube you know like comment subscribe and be honest with us hopefully you guys enjoyed it we're going to be adding more to the show the show is still growing and that's probably going to be it for today guys that's going to be it great show knocked it out solo my first solo episode so hopefully i didn't bore you guys too much hopefully not <laughs> all right guys i'm heading out of here you guys be safe like i said look out for our special j house radio episode or spoiler cast of the joker going to be coming next week to our patreon viewers and i will catch you guys later peace out <laughs>